All right. Welcome back, everybody. Um, it's been a little while since we've had a video, so this is Lesson 7, 8, and it is on interest, both simple and compound interest. Now, by what I, what I mean by interest is if you put money in a bank, they're going to charge you or they're going to pay you interest. Just like if you borrow money from a bank or you borrow money from a credit card, they're going to charge you interest. And there's two main ways to compute interest. There's simple interest, which is just like its name implies. It's very simple to calculate. Uh, it doesn't uh, add on to itself. Um, you just figure it out one time, and that's how much money you're going to either uh, earn or pay. Compound interest is a little bit more complicated. Uh, it's an exponential function, and what has actually happened in a compound interest is you take a you find a little bit of interest each time, and it's getting added in as you go, and so you end up with a greater amount of interest. Um, and my uh, guest here that's helping me out with this video is Max. So say hi, Mac. Hi. All right. So let's get right into the formulas for finding both simple and compound interest. Let's start first with simple interest. Okay. Um, and so. Let's see. So for simple interest, let's stop right there. The simple interest, you compute the interest by taking the principal, which is the amount of money you put in the bank, times the interest rate, which is going to be a percent that you're going to change into a decimal, okay, times the number of years. Okay? So um, if I take uh, an example where I take $1 million, okay, and I put it in an 8% interest for 18 years. Let's say this is a trust fund, and this is going to be Max College Fund, okay? okay. So some rich relative of his left him a million dollars, and they put it in this really great investment that's earning 8% interest, and he's going, it's going to be gathering interest for 18 years. Well, all i got to do is take all these numbers, um, and I basically plug them into a calculator. So tomorrow is a really good day to remember to bring your calculator. So let's go ahead and do that. So sure enough, I take 1 million times point. 0, 0.08 times 18, and I get a staggering amount of interest, which is more than the original amount of money I started with. It comes out to be $1,440,000. That's just interest, plus the million dollars you had in the bank in the first place. So your bank account balance at the end of all this would be $2,440,000. Thanks, unknown relative. Yeah, there you go. Not bad. Um, and that is just interest adding up over the years. Okay. Now, the difference with compound. Okay, we'll change the color here. Okay, in compound, um, and let me back up for just a second. Um, if I want to find the actual amount in the account in simple interest, the A, that's the amount you end up with at the end, you would actually have to take the original principal, which was a million dollars, and add in the interest that we just computed. That's where I got the $2,440,000. Um, one of the differences with compound interest is that the interest that you're earning goes right into the account, so you then get to earn more interest on the interest itself. Um, and because of the way that formula works, it always gives you the A. It always tells you how much money you have uh, as it kind of adds up. Okay. Now, the formula for compound interest is the same P, the same R, and the T, but they're a little bit different formula. Okay. So in this formula, it's P times parentheses 1 plus R over N to the NT power. And so once again, P stands for the principal, R stands for the rate, and T stands for the time in years, exactly the same as what we had in the green formula, the simple interest formula. Okay, the only difference so far is that instead of getting the interest, it's actually going to give me the account balance. Now, there is one extra variable, that N, that appeared two different times. It appears right here, and it appears right there. Now, that stands for the number of times we're going to stop and figure out the interest and then add it to the account. Okay, which kind of makes sense. If I'm getting 8% per year, but I only do the interest for half of a year, well, I'm not getting 8% for six months. I have to literally divide the interest rate in half. So that's what the N does. Okay, so the N, um, there it is again, the A is the amount, the total we have at the end of the year, and the N is the number of times per year that I compound the interest. Okay, go ahead and stop there. All right, it doesn't want to stop, so I'm going to have to stop it. Okay, the number of times you compound per year. Okay, so let's take the same example, the $1 million at 8% interest, and let's do it for 18 years. So here we go. Oh, now it wants to stop. All right, so once again, let's take the uh, formula. A is equal to the P times 1 plus the rate divided by N to the NT power. Now, if I'm only doing compounding annually, which is what we're doing here, you notice that the N is just 1, which means basically it drops out. So it's basically 1 million times 1.08 to the 18th power. If I put that into a calculator, and again, super important to bring your calculator tomorrow, you can see that you're going to get a total 
balance at the end of 18 years of three million nine hundred ninety-six dollars, uh, nine. I'm sorry, nine hundred ninety-six thousand dollars nine and nineteen dollars and then fifty cents. Okay, so if I go ahead and subtract out the two million four hundred forty thousand that we had when we did it, the same problem with simple interest, you get a difference of one million five hundred fifty-six thousand nineteen dollars and fifty cents. Okay, that is a big difference by just changing the method that we compute interest. Okay, I like and the so, second one. Yeah, I do too, especially if I'm making money. Now, there's a catch with compound interest. Credit cards are also compound interest. So, with a credit card, um, you borrow a bunch of money to buy something, and you don't pay it back right away. You pay a little bit at a time. Well, if your credit card card is charging you really high interest, like, and it's not unusual to have credit card interest rates of 28, 29 percent then essentially, if you don't make any payments, the exact opposite is happening. It's computing interest, which you also owe the bank for not paying them yet, and they add that to how much money you owe them. Then the next time they figure out the interest, they're going to do the amount you actually spent plus the interest you haven't paid yet. So this compound interest can really add up quick if it's working in your favor. It also adds up really quick when it's working against you. Okay, so it's very good not to, to get in the habit of not running up big credit card balances because it can really, really end up costing you a ton of money in the end. Okay, all right. So that is simple interest and compound interest. So let's uh, before we move on, let's go ahead and review those formulas one more time. Sorry, <clears throat> getting towards the end of the day. So once again, simple interest. We have I is equal to P times R times T. Okay, uh, and if I want to find the actual amount I have at the end, I'd add the P and the I together. With compound interest, it already computes the A automatically, and the formula is P times the quantity 1 plus R over N to the NT power. Now, the nice thing about these two formulas is any of the letters that appear in both of them do mean the same thing. So the P's both mean principal, the R's both mean interest rates, and the T both uh, refer to time in years. Okay? So that's it for compound and simple interest. Now, this formula is a little bit different than the one in your book. The one in your book, they have you figure out the interest rate and the number of times that you're going to compound separately and then put those numbers into the formula. Okay, I think you can see the advantage of just being able to plug everything into the formula one time and go from there. So we're going to actually, if it's not already written into your book, we're going to write this blue formula into your book for compound interest. Okay, um, Without boring you with more examples, um, that's pretty much what you need to know. I would definitely make sure you bring a calculator to class tomorrow and make sure that you know these two formulas. Okay, Another good question for your daily quiz uh, might be, um, if I give you the formulas, uh, what do the different letters stand for? Okay, And again, P stands for the principal, the amount you put in. R is the interest rate as a decimal. T is the time in years. And N only appears in the compound interest formula, and it refers to the number of times per year that you stop and compound. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and we will practice computing interest in class tomorrow. Bye. See you.